All right, how are we doing? Has anyone else been trapped on Zoom all day? No, okay. yep. <laughs> Hi, it's kind of terrible, huh? Okay, <laughs> Sydney's shaking her head, yeah, that's pretty terrible. Okay, we'll try to make this as least painful as possible. So um, the first thing I want to touch base on was the whole we got canceled on Tuesday, right? So um, just trying to figure out kind of what to do with that. Um, hopefully, did all of you get the text message from CMC? We're all on that, okay. Um, which I was super frustrated because I was like, we can do this. We have big windows, we don't need power. And they're like, nope, you're out of here. So um, what I'm looking at right now um, and what I just posted on Canvas is, um, let's just see what we get through. So um, originally we were going to do blood and then we had to switch to hearts and now the blood should be in this week. So what I'd like to do, you guys already have your lab work done for blood, or sorry, for the hearts, right? You did that, um, was that exercise 27, I think? The end of there. Let's go ahead and do blood this week. So what I'm thinking is, you guys made quick work of the endocrine dissection. So what I'd like to do this coming week um, is to go ahead and do blood. Um, Cause a lot of that, I mean, you're looking through the microscopes, making sure you can identify the different blood cells. And then we've got a couple hands-on activities. My guess is we, we could have time uh, to get through the hearts as well, or at least a good part of them. Um, and then we'll just kind of take it from there. So if we realize, yeah, there really isn't enough time, then we might have to do something like say, okay, well, we're going to do hearts next week, right? Just kind of push things off. Um, we might move the lab practical back, but let's just see where we get, right? I mean. It's 2020, so we're just kind of rolling with the punches anyway. Um, do prepare yourself to take care of the blood lab. Um, I can't think of the exercises offhand. I think there's two exercises. Um, and you're already prepared for hearts, so hopefully we'll have time to do that, and we'll just take it from there. Does that work? Becky? Yeah. For this lecture today, are we talking about blood or hearts? Blood. Okay, good. <laughs> the only thing that switched was lab and now we're kind of you know all over the place so yeah we're talking about we were today. supposed to do the smart book hormones or the smart book um test on blood or the the blood. okay yep. great perfect and i'll be working tomorrow to get some um lecture videos for the heart together um because you'll be doing that and the smart book stuff next week so okay so blood um wow, I don't even know where to begin. So um, we posted a video and so then I have this weird like, okay, what do we do in lecture since you already watched that? Um, so let me just start by saying, is there anything that someone wants to start out with like, hey, this was super confusing. Could we go over that um, one more time? Blood typing really got me. The difference between an antigen and an whatever the other anti is antibody yep they really got me um so and then the presence of the rh or absence of the rh mm -hmm. um yeah i kept getting those those kept stumping me on the smart book so okay. i mean I getting those that's down a common that. yeah that's a common thing that students struggle with and i'm seeing other people nodding their heads yes i would love to jump in with that one let's just go for it okay okay so let's see if i can can you try this. define? Can you define what a? I don't even know how to pronounce it, but a agglutinin. Agglutinin. Yep. It's a um, antibody. Okay. Yeah, not a term that I actually hear used um, that often. So, um, okay. Can we see my whiteboard? I'm gonna try this, and we'll see if I have the dexterity to do this. So. Um, so we have different blood types, right? Does anyone know their blood type offhand? Want to share with us? Mine's o positive. O positive for Brit? Mine's O negative. Who said that? Audrey. Mine Audrey's is o. two. Raina's is two. Raina's O negative? Yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll start with O then. Okay. So the blood type is based off of what antigens, what proteins are on the surface of your cell. 
So what I typically, and again, it totally depends on how you think. I'm very like linear grid oriented apparently. So when I think about the blood type, I immediately ask myself, okay, what antigen is on the surface? And what was the definition of an antigen? It's something that um, stimulates an immune response. Good. Yeah, so they're proteins that stimulate an immune response. And so really, pretty much any protein on the surface of a cell um, could do that. Now, in our bodies, what we'll find is you don't want to mount an immune response to your own proteins, right? But we still use this term antigen. So if you had a bacterial infection, right, your immune system is going after these surface proteins or antigens. So what I typically do is I draw my red blood cell and I say, okay, what antigen is on the surface? Now, with type O blood, do you have A antigens? Nope. Do you have type B antigens? No. No. Okay. So you don't have A or you don't have B. That's what makes you type O. Now, the plus and minus has to do with that RH factor. So there's another antigen. Um, it's called the RH factor because it was first found in like Reese's monkeys. Um, sometimes you'll see it called the D antigen as well, right? But so what's the difference then between our O positive and O negative blood type? What do I need to put on the surface of one of these? O positive has D antigens. Good. So that O positive has the RH or the D um, antigen. Maybe okay. I'll is RH and D antigens, those are the same thing? Same thing. Okay, that was confusing in the book. Okay, cool. Yeah, now I'm trying to draw Ds and that's not really working so well, right? <laughs> it looks like Mickey Mouse. Um, that's my attempt to draw a D on the outside of the cell. Now in your book, they're gonna put like little circles or triangles or something to signify that protein. I usually just go with the letter. So like if someone told me they had type A positive blood, I would put A's on the surface <laughs> to signify that A antigen. It doesn't really look like the letter A, but there we go. And then they would also have that D or that RH, right? Someone with A positive would have both of those. Okay, so anytime you're thinking about blood type, the type is based off of what those surface proteins are, what the antigens are. We okay so far? Give me a thumbs up if you're I can't even see all of you. Where are we? Thumbs up. Oh, my, oh, good. Some people who don't have screens are finding that. Jennifer, are you good? I didn't, I missed it. Okay, cool. Okay, so then where it starts to, well, it continues to be complicated because what you have to think about are what antibodies are going to be in this person. So what is an antibody? like a free floating uh i think of it as independent body that interacts with the antigens okay good um who's making those joe do you know who produces uh, them? you make them and they float in the the body makes them and they float in the blood yeah so they're made by the immune system they're made by lymphocytes so this is part of your immune response right so your white blood cells are producing these free float fro <laughs> free floating proteins that are trying to attack the antigens. So in your own body, you would never want to produce antibodies that would attack yourself, right? That would be an autoimmune disease. And so what you start looking at is, okay, if, if you have an antigen, you're not gonna make an antibody against it. If you don't have that antigen, you're going to make an antibody against it. So, someone with O positive blood, would we make an antibody against A? Yes. Yes, right? We don't have it, we've never seen it before, that would be considered foreign. And so I write that as anti-A. Can I ask a quick question? Of course. Um, why would you make an antibody against something that you don't have in your body? That is an awesome question. Um, so <laughs> it really becomes problematic with these A and B blood types for some reason. You're totally right, Tanya, that 
most times you would have to have had at least one exposure to an antigen, right? So like you would make an antibody against E. coli, right? It's foreign, it's not you, but typically um, it takes your body a little while to produce these. It seems like we have a really rapid response for some reason against um, these blood type antigens. So basically, if you, if you get a transfusion of the wrong type, your body is going to treat it as if it was E. coli or influenza or something like that and attack it. Yeah. Um, so if you have type O blood, you would actually produce antibodies against A and you would produce antibodies against B. Would, and then the RH factor is the other one we consider. Would you produce, would this individual, is that Audrey with the o, o positive, I think? Um, would you produce antibodies against D? Not for O positive. Not for O positive, right? Because that is part of your blood type. You would attack yourself. So we wouldn't do that. How about Raina with her O negative? What antibodies would she make? A, B, and D. Good. Anti A, anti B. And because she does not have the RH factor or the D antigen, you would produce an antibody against it as well. How about this random person I made down here? What antibodies would someone with A positive blood make? Just B. Just B. Does that make sense? You don't, you would never make antibodies that would attack your, I shouldn't say never, but you don't want to make antibodies that would attack yourself. Okay. But otherwise so, that, otherwise that antigen is foreign. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the antibodies that you have are only going to be the antigens that you don't have. Correct. Bingo. Okay. Okay. Yep. Cool. And to me, like, kind of going to Tanya's question, like, well, why would you ever do that? It doesn't really start to make all the sense until you start thinking about um, donating blood, right, or receiving blood. So like if we looked at our examples here, um, that's not how you spell receive, but now we're stuck with it. It's just like the classroom. Okay. Um, I, think, I think what I meant more was, and maybe, maybe I didn't um, say it right, but I think I mean like you don't, do, you don't get an antibody in your body until you're, um, until you're stimulated by that substance. But if you've never had someone, where would you get another type of blood that you would then develop an antibody for? Right, so it would only be a problem in transfusion. So I think, why would be, oh, okay, so, so the antibodies happen as soon as you get the transfusion. I believe so, like, but that's the weird thing is that it happens so quickly, right? Normally it would take you like a week to come okay. up with antibodies against influenza. Gotcha. But I mean, like, like for instance, if they can, like, say you've never had a blood tra blood transfusion, mm -hmm. they would still they would still be able to see antibodies in your blood. Right? That I'm not positive. When they type you, you're yeah. and we'll do this in lab. When you get typed, they're not looking for the antibodies. You're okay. actually mixing your blood uh, with little vials of antibodies and seeing what clumps. And that tells you what antigens are on the surface. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. Sorry, um, I, I got like hung that, up on that. No, I like that you're asking that. And we'll talk about one example that maybe makes a little more sense as well. So, um, so Audrey here has her type O positive blood. She gets in a really bad car accident. She shows up to the ER, right? She needs a couple pints of blood. What can we give her? O positive or O negative? Which one? You could give both, right? Correct. <laughs> Good. Yep. Okay. Anything else that Audrey can have? No. What would happen if you gave her type A blood? It would attack it. Yeah, so she has these antibodies against A. If you gave her type A blood, her antibodies are going to have this reaction they're gonna attach all over the surface of those red blood cells that you just gave her, trying to save her life. Um, and instead of saving her life, you're gonna like rupture all these cells, there's chunks of things everywhere. Um, you're gonna put her into even worse shape. Like that's an easy way to kill someone. 
fun, right? Which is why they always double check people. So then how about Reyna? What blood can she receive? Just O negative. Correct. Only O negative. Even giving her O positive, right? She has an antibody against that D antigen, and so she'll attack it. How about our type A positive blood? Molly, what can, yep. Or B negative. Say again? B positive or B negative or O positive or O negative. What happens if I give her B positive? Oh, sorry. A positive or A, sorry. Okay, wait, why can I give her O positive? Because it's the universal donor. You can give it to anyone. Okay, it's true. Why? Why can it doesn't have any antigens. Good. So since that O doesn't have an A or a B antigen on it, she's not going to be able to, right? She doesn't, as long as it doesn't have a B, she's not going to attack it. And O is kind of naked. Right? And then O negative would work as well. Okay, who can, let's think about the opposite direction. Except now I gotta move you guys, you're in my way. Um, so is O positive or O negative the universal giver? Okay, let's look at that. So if Audrey was about to donate blood and she's O positive, who can we give that blood to? Everyone except O negatives. Everyone right. except O negative, right? So um, if you tried to give it to an O negative person, they would attack the D, right? So you could give this to an O positive person, an A positive person, uh, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive, AB negative. I think I covered it. Everyone except that O negative. Not quite universal though, right? So the universal donor is truly Reyna down here, right? Her red blood cells are like totally naked, right? No A's on them, no B's on them, no D's on them, nothing for other people's blood types um, to attack. So this is truly the universal donor. Did that make sense, Audrey? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's try this. Well, before I do that, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, does that help? What questions do we still have on that? I'm still confused about the, um, the anti-serum. There were a couple questions on like the, the smart book that were, like the, the semantics were just so confusing. It was like, oh. if you give this person an anti-serum or this person, uh, maybe I'll, I'll look it up and see exactly. Does anyone else know what I'm talking about? Yes. I also thought the semantics were very odd on those. It was just difficult to follow what exactly they were asking. Okay. But, so I don't know, maybe the con, so that then made me confused about the concept of the theorems. <laughs> so, Which is the opposite of what we were going for. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. I'll see if I can find what that question is, Allie, because um, off I the can, top of my head, I'm not picturing it. I can also work on that. Okay, while we're doing well, what I would like you to do is, um, so I'm gonna, oh, I just got a question. Yeah, um, so what I wanna do real quick is I'm gonna put you guys in a breakout room and what I'd like you to do is that same exact exercise, um, but with someone with AB negative blood, okay? So I'm telling you the blood type, I want you to go through with your group and figure out the antigens, the antibodies, what they could receive and who they could donate to. Okay, I believe in your breakout room, I haven't tried this before, but on the share screen, it gives me that option for that whiteboard I was just using. So you guys might be able to do that or you can just talk it through, whatever is easiest for you. But if somebody in the group wants to pull up a whiteboard and share, um, feel free. It can, yeah, oh, Neg. 
O neg. Okay. It, receive, it receives O negative. Correct. Can it donate O negative? To it, o negative? It, it gives AB positive and AB negative. That's it. Okay. Okay. Right, Becky? Jennifer what, Jennifer, what would happen if you gave this blood to someone who was O negative? They would, it would um, attack it because it has the anti A and the anti B. Okay, yeah. that yeah. makes, just as I looked up at my notes, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Okay, good. Got it, got yeah. it, thank you. Okay, so you guys just got finished, right? Yep. Okay, I'll Wait, grab Becky. people back. Yeah. Is it correct that um, AB negative can donate to AB positive and AB negative because it doesn't have the D um, antibodies and it doesn't necessarily adversely affect um, AB positive? So okay, makes, so you're asking why an AB positive person can get AB negative blood? Yes, I think so. Okay, so AB positive will not make antibodies against A or B or the RH factor, right? So they can get AB positive or negative. They're not going, you don't attack a negative. That's the weird thing with the RH factor. Instead of, I mean, it'd be, almost be easier if it was called like ABD and then you'd be like, oh, okay. Like they're not producing an antibody against that. They'll be fine. You could, but if you had someone who was, I don't know, make sure I do that right. An AB positive person can receive AB negative blood. An AB negative person could not receive AB positive blood. Right. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's what we decided. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna... So the D an antibody. D antigen. D sorry, it's a D antigen. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't have some. They either have it or they don't. They don't have like make a reverse situation that's going to attack. Mm -mm. Exactly. Okay. Okay. That's so confusing. Hmm. Okay. So it can receive all other blood types. Uh -huh. Becky, is that right? You guys got to work on your um, positive and negatives in there. Because you could um, receive a negative blood, but you couldn't get a positive blood, for example. Okay. Can you get B negative blood and not be positive blood? Like, is that across the board? Correct. Okay. Right, because notice your person here makes antibodies against the RH factor, against D. So any positive blood you give them, they would attack. Okay. Yep, and so that's why I always write out this, wh what antibodies do they have? And you never want to give them something that you could attack. Right. How about your donate to? Who, who are you donating to? It's not just, what was wrong? is it positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Okay. Oh, it doesn't let you go back. <laughs> you have this little select tool, but I made all these boxes too big. Ah. There it is. Oh, look at you. Yeah, it's the little select tool at the bottom. Oh, that's yeah. good to know. That out, but yeah. <laughs> right there. Okay, so you could donate to AB negative. What would be the problem with donating to someone who's AB positive? Their blood would then attack. No, would it? Or, um, 
the antibodies in the recipient's blood would attack the uh, positive blood or attack the D antigens, right? Well, but if the person you're giving to is AB positive, they're not going to make antibodies against A, B, or D, right? And so they could receive negative blood. So positive blood types can receive negative blood types. Negative blood types cannot receive positive blood types. Always. Always. OK. Can A, B also donate to A and B blood? No, but they can receive A and B blood. Correct. Why? <laughs> so uh, if this patient went to donate blood to, or sorry. Uh, because A, B has B antigens. So, so you're you not going to attack it to A, A, B, then their antibodies would attack the B antigens in the A, B blood. Yes. Yeah, so you, you can't donate to someone with type A blood because they're going to attack the B part. And if you gave to someone with a B part, they're going to attack the A. You got it. Good. It's always funny coming back from these rooms because some people stay for a long time. It was nice. We didn't figure out how to do the whiteboard. Where's that at? Um, so on my screen at the very bottom, there's a button that says share screen. And I don't know oh, if yeah. you have it when you're in the main room or not. No, we do. Oh, oh so, so when you when you hit share screen, then you can do the whiteboard. So when I hit share screen, the second choice over is a whiteboard. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Ooh, iPhone, iPad. I might have to see if I can get my iPad to be like a little writing. Oh, that would be sweet. It would hopefully be better drawing. Okay. How did that go? Okay, so here's one of the things. Um, Audrey, can you share yours? Did you get rid of that or do you still have that whiteboard? I think it goes away. Let's but try. I do it again. Let's see what happens. No, you don't need to do it again. Just tell me if it's still there. Okay. Oh no, it definitely goes away. Okay. <laughs> so one of the things that we were talking about, right? So, um, sorry, let's do this. Um, so we had an AB negative blood type. Allie, what antigens did you guys decide were on the surface? Um, AB negative, right? And so no antigens. On the surface. Ooh. No. Molly's shaking her head no. So is oh, Zoe. Antigens A and B, sorry. Oh, okay. So we were just in the wrong column. <laughs> sorry. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's an A on the outside and a B on the outside. Okay. Were you in the same group as Molly and Zoe? <laughs> okay. Um, so Zoe, what um antibodies would this person produce then? Um it can't not the A or B. Okay, so they don't yeah. have antibodies against A or B, but who do they have antibodies against? The um, anti-D? Anti-D or anti-RH, you can say it oh, either way. Okay. Yep, same thing. It's super confusing. They just need to make up their mind. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay, we got that? So far, so good. Um, so Sydney, what did you guys say? What, what kind of blood could be received? Oop, can't hear you, which is weird because you're unmuted. Who is in Sydney's group that can help? Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Okay. 
A negative, B negative, and AB negative. Okay, and there's one more. AB positive? No. I don't know. <laughs> somebody, no, somebody else jump in there. What else? O neg. O negative. O. Yep. Right, universal donor, so everyone can get that. Okay, then the hardest part is who can you donate to? So Tracy, what did you guys decide there? Uh, we had AB positive and AB negative. Good. Did we all end up in that same place picking those? Okay, good. Um, so how would you explain, so the, the hard, the weird thing with blood typing, right, is you want to be able to kind of work through it and think about it like if you end up going on into a healthcare professional, as a, sorry, as a healthcare profession, I mean, you could be typing blood, so it's important to understand, obviously, that you can kill someone if you screw it up. Um, you're always going to get double checked. Um, but also then thinking about explaining maybe to patients, right, like why did we give them this blood type or why, you know, why can't you donate to your loved one, that sort of thing. So um, one of the groups was asking, or how did, I, how did we phrase that? Why can't this patient, our AB negative person, why can't they donate to an A negative person, their cousin who needed that transfusion? Because they have to be, they have an antibody to be. Correct. Type. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. To me, honestly, like the easiest way to do this is to write it out, right? Um, at some point, you'll be so fluid with it that it'll be like, oh yeah, you can totally have this, this, or this. But honestly, anytime that I see a blood typing question, I just write it all out. Well, they have this, they make these antibodies, therefore I can give them this or they could give this to someone. That's kind of the way I run it. Do they always do, um, like if you're getting a blood transfusion, the, the book talked about, there are a bunch of different other, some yeah. of them with really funny names like Duffy. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, like do they, do they do the cross match before they transfuse you just to make sure with every transfusion? It depends. So if it's a scheduled surgery, right, they'd want to have as good of a match as possible. And there are certainly people with um, rare blood types that will actually bank um, their own blood and their special banks for, for rare blood types. Um, but in a pinch, right, if someone comes in off of an auto accident and we don't even have time to type them, what do we give them? O negative. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So when in doubt, you give them the O negative and then you would, you could type them <clears throat> and then you get them the closest match possible. But yeah, I have a quick question. If it's a scheduled surgery, you'd try to do a better match. Yeah, Britt. Sorry, um, did it say in the uh, reading as well that um, you could give someone O positive in a pinch because of, the, uh, I guess the RH is so diluted? Is that right? Or, yep. okay. okay. Yeah, um, so yeah, the RH factor is interesting. It's smaller. So one of the things that happens there is it's small enough, like the A and the B antigen won't cross the placenta but the RH factor is small enough that it actually can cross the placenta and we can talk about um, those effects. So on those same lines, Britt, you can give someone who is a negative blood type, you can give them O positive, but now you've sensitized them. So um, if you tried oh. to give them a positive blood type again, then it would be really bad. So you get away with it okay. once. And they, in sure. particular, um, they don't like to do that to women. Because yeah. if you are an O negative woman and you came into the ER and they gave you O positive, you'd be fine. But if you went to have children and any of them had a positive blood type, your body would attack the baby. Yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah that kind of happened to me when I went in and they thought I was O neg first. Um, okay. And so they were worried because it was going to, they were gonna have to give me the, uh, I forget the name of it. <laughs> whatever through the IV, but then they realized they made a mistake on my typing, so. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, it all worked out. It all but worked they, out, but. Glad they made a mistake there. Yeah, good question. Qu 
question. Okay, so one of the things Britt was talking about there was hemolytic disease of the newborn. Did that make sense or is that something we should look at real quick? Will you go over it, please? I will. Okay, so this is the hemolytic disease of the newborn is only a problem in an O negative mother with an O positive, or sorry, let me start over. <laughs> All right. Okay, here's mom. Wow. I gotta work on this. Okay. It's only a problem in a negative mom. It can be A, B negative, A, B negative, O negative, any negative mom who ends up, well, that's going to be challenging. Okay. Oh boy. With a positive baby. Okay. So what happens um, in the first pregnancy would be that that RH factor can actually cross the placenta. And since mom is negative, we know that she's capable of making those anti-RH or anti-D antibodies. Usually you get away with this for the first pregnancy. So it's like her immune system is catching on slowly as those you know, cells are sneaking in across the placenta. She gives birth. If she has another baby, it's, it's like an immune response, right? You get influenza the first time, you get H1N1, and you get really sick. And then you have an immunity because you can make antibodies really fast. So the first pregnancy, mom's immune system is starting to figure out what is this foreign invader, right? If she has a pregnancy with a second positive baby, um, they'll develop hemolytic disease of the newborn where her antibodies that she formed during the first pregnancy and the antibodies are just like these little proteins. Now it just looks like I'm drawing another stick figure, all right? But those proteins are gonna actually cross the placenta and attack the baby. So typically what is done in a, in a negative mom, an RH negative mom, they can actually kind of prophylactically give you a treatment, it's called Rogam. And this is the weirdest thing. Rogam is antibodies, it's, it's anti-D antibodies. So you inject these into mom and they're gonna circulate through her body and actually grab any of those RH positive, right? Any of the D antigens that are the babies and they are going to destroy them before mom's immune system sees it. This is like kind of mind boggling to me, right? You are giving her the antibodies. They won't cross the placenta and go after baby, but they'll actually clear her body of those babies RH positive um, antigens so that she doesn't get a chance to form an immune response. Does that make any sense? Questions, questions on that? I have sort of an unrelated question. Mm -hmm. So then where do those go? The, the Rogam, the antibodies? Yeah. So antibodies don't circulate forever. So typically your liver um, is actually gonna end up taking those out of circulation. So okay. any, any subsequent pregnancy, you get more of those. You'd have to be given more Rogam. Okay. Yep, you take them out of circulation eventually. How would you know if you were gonna have an RH, po potential of having an RH positive baby? If your, your husband is RH? Exactly. So if the dad, the only way it can happen is if dad is RH positive, right? Because mom's RH negative. Um, but a, my understanding is a lot of times they just don't even, if you're negative, they just give you the Rogam. They don't blood type dad. Because maybe, maybe it's not your husband. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's someone else's baby. And we don't want to go there. Yeah. We just want to protect the baby. So. <laughs> I'm sure you could ask. I'm sure you could ask if you really wanted to. But. Okay. Okay. I think I found <laughs> your question, Allie. I just got 
logged out. It kicked me out. Give me one second. Okay. Oh yeah, there's all sorts of them. There's not just one, is there? Um, so someone had asked in the chat the, uh, what were they calling them? Agglutinins and agglutinogens. They are the same as antigens and antibodies. And your book is like, they're often called, no one calls them agglutinins and agglutinogens that I've heard of. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody goes to the blood bank, if you end up working in the hospital and you hear someone call them agglutinin, you let me know. Because that's not a term um, that I'm familiar with. Well, I mean, I'm familiar with it, but not one that I hear used. Um, okay, so are we seeing, yep. Sorry, just to add on that. Mm -hmm. So the agglutination is when the antibodies attack it and then that's when the clumping happens. So that's how you know it's the wrong. When agglutination happens, it's wrong. It's wrong. Like, yep. like okay. Yep, that's I that was, transfusion okay. reaction. Yeah, and I think that's what was coming up um, with Ali's question on these. Um, so are we looking at my masks or what do we call it? McGraw Hill now. So when you're actually doing this blood typing, what ends up happening, right, is, and we'll do this in lab, so maybe it'll just make more sense next week, right? So what you end up doing is you'll take three circles <laughs> and you'll put a drop of blood in each. Oh boy. Right? And then you actually have vials of antibodies, right? And I don't remember what colors are what, but there's like one that's anti-A. So let's just call this, and I it's anti-A, right? This is the actual antibody. So somewhere they have actually like a rabbit that they gave the wrong blood type and it cranked out a bunch of antibodies against A and they put them in a little vial. Right? And so then you actually take a toothpick and mix these together. This is where Molly was going. If you see clumping, if you see agglutination, that means the antibody found its antigen. That would indicate, clumping would indicate, so let's, let's say this one clumps. I don't know how to draw clumping. There's a big star here, right? That would mean that there is an A antigen on here. And then in our next dot over, Right, maybe we add the serum, this anti-serum, this is the antibodies in a bottle, right? Say this is anti-B, and we stir those together and there's no clumping. That would indicate you don't have the B antibody, right? And then you grab your final jar, I'm gonna make it pink, right, for the D, anti-D antibody, and you mix those together. And let's say we get clumping again, right? That indicates that this person has that antigen, the antibody found who was looking for and caused the clumping. This is a terrible example. When you come to lab, hopefully it'll make more sense. <laughs> would this be a B negative person then? Uh, this would be an A positive person. So because there was clumping in the presence Right, okay, yep. So it's not the antibody they're producing, it's the antibody in a bottle. So when you drop that on the blood, if there's clumping, that means the protein was, the protein we were looking for, or the protein that the antibody is against is present. Okay, so this is different, this is a different process than what happens in the body. Yes. This is trying to select for the antigen. This, yes, because this is how you're actually going to type someone. So they're coming in through the ER doors. You need to know what type of blood to give them from the blood bank. Yes, okay. that's what okay. this is. Okay, gotcha. Yep. And so I, now this is where I was like, oh, Allie, this is what you're talking about. So when you're mixed with the anti-A anti-serum, <laughs> that's this guy over here, uh, or the anti-B anti-serum does not agglutinate here, let's just do this. It does not agglutinate when mixed with anti-A, so they don't have A, right? And it doesn't agglutinate when mixed with that little vial of anti-B, so we know they don't have B. So what blood type would this be in this question? 
Does that make it O? O. Yeah. So, what's that, Molly? <laughs> I was also confused by that when this question came up, and I think the only reason I got them right was because it was like answer it asked a couple times, and I'm like, oh, the answer is oh, but I didn't necessarily know why either. So. Yes. Does this make sense now? So when they're talking about this anti serum, this is like a little vial of antibodies that we're testing blood with. So I think, yeah, so I just wrote this in the chat and I think that's why it was so confusing for me because it's like a double negative in this question. So it's like anti-A, anti-serum is yes. actually A yeah. antibody? Yeah, so serum okay. is normally what you'd call blood plasma. And so this okay. anti-serum is like the testing vial, right? The test equipment. And so they're saying this is the, the test. It's, yes, it's the antibody. Okay, got it. Clear as mud. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, does it does it make sense? It does. Now? It does. <laughs> yeah, I can see why you'd say a double negative. Yep. Okay, so wait, just to clarify, mm -hmm. anti anti serum is if if it coagulates or clumps, then that means that they have the A antigen. Yes. Right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, because of the double negative. Okay, I understand. <laughs> now. Yeah. So the thing that I guess to keep in mind is if you're seeing something about anti serum. It's, it's a blood test. So we're actually, we just have little vials of antibodies and we're gonna look for the antigens. Yeah. Good questions. Okay. Yeah, and that's super frustrating if there's something you're not understanding in that. Um, smart book assignment, they can take a really long time. Did, um, did any of you try, like, if you missed that question, did it dump you, like, to the section of reading? Have we played with that at all? So it should, let's just check real quick. If you get it wrong so many times, it's like, you can't go on, you must read this. Without, right? Okay, yeah. so but even right here, right? So I picked the wrong answer on purpose. And let's see, if we go to read about the concept, You're telling us about blood typing. It's the part in blue is the part with the answer always. But the part in blue doesn't use the term anti-serum in this one, doesn't it? Does it? That was the hard part. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I'd say they kind of screwed that up. They should be using the same terminology in both, yeah. Sorry guys, that is confusing. Hopefully we all got there. Hopefully no one gave up. Okay. I know in micro there was a lot of times where questions would just be straight up wrong. Really? Yeah, or like it would give you three blanks to fill in, yeah. but it was only a one word thing. And so you'd fill in that one word and it wouldn't let you continue <sighs> until you filled in all the blanks and then you'd get it wrong. Like it, it definitely can have so let me know. I haven't like, experienced that yet, but let me know. So I actually purposely I looked through McGraw Hill's stuff for micro, and I chose not to use it. Um, but this one I actually really liked, um, and I am going through and like selecting, so I'm kind of paring down the questions instead of there being what the 150. Um, but I don't necessarily always uh, go through them completely. If you ever come across one that you're like that is just wrong, email me. One and it'll because I don't want you to get reinforced with the wrong answer, so we should definitely discuss it as a class. Um, and then also, they have it set up so that I can say, like, you guys screwed up. Like, I can contact the publisher and be like, you should double check this question. So, um, we can actually fix some of that too. I I do think for the most part, for me anyway, they're helpful because okay. I get to like constantly go over the information. And even with like the reading the concept in the chapter, it's like, oh, okay. Like even if something's like super screwy, then I can still be like, I'm gonna go to the textbook and I'm gonna read through this. So for the most part for me, they're still helpful, but there's mm -hmm. definitely those questions that make me wanna die, so. <laughs> well, and this one totally makes sense, the anti-serum. Um, and feel free to guys, like, um, I, again, there's like that little discussion board in Canvas. You're, you're totally welcome to use that too. Like particularly on these like smart book assignments, right? This is like, completion it's not like a quiz so if you come across one where you're like that's nutty feel free to throw something in there right um, and maybe we can even clarify something quicker right so if Allie had said like 
what the heck are they talking about with this anti-serum if someone else, you know, saw that, whatever. Um, and I look through there occasionally as well, but feel free to email me too. So. Okay. Thank you for taking the time on that. Oh, that no, of good. course. No, and that I want it to make sense to you guys. And lab will help. Um, the kits, I mean, they're not hospital quality, so they're certainly not perfect. You're not going to be like, this is my blood type when you, yeah, walk into the hospital. Um, but it's kind of cool to see how that actually works. Uh, chat. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Other, <laughs> that was blood typing. Other questions? Becky, can I assume that we're going to have to, we have to have an understanding as to like where the red and white blood cells come from and like that lineation of how they're created? Yeah, what is this, what is this process called? <laughs> is that hematopoiesis? Yes, hematopoiesis, or sometimes you'll see it as hemopoiesis. That is the production of those red, uh, sorry, of blood cells. Um, and then you can even get more specific and talk about erythropoiesis um, for red blood cells. But um, I tried to point out, so like in the little lecture video, for erythropoiesis, for example, you don't have to have each and every step, right? I, I circled those ones where I'm like, you should recognize these um, terms. And again, I'm trying to pick those ones where like, um, for example, what's the immature red blood cell that's actually what's released into the blood? What was that guy called? Reticular bat, reticular Reticuloblast or something? Yeah, a reticulocyte, yeah. Um, and so those are gonna be ones, when those show up in the bloodstream, we're expecting a small percentage of them, but if you see elevated numbers, it means something. So I'm trying to pick out those terms where it's like, no, you're actually gonna wanna know this. Yep. All right, I have a question for you. Did a little quiz just pop up? Yes. Hey, okay. answer that. I'm playing with polling, so we'll see how this works. Wait, where did it pop up? Where are you guys seeing it? It's just in the middle of my screen. <laughs> oh, weird. Um. Nothing popped up for me. Let's see. Who's saying that? I'm not even seeing who's. Uh, Britt, sorry. Britt. Do you have to enable your pop-ups maybe in your browser? I don't know. Let me see. You select all that apply or just one? Just one. I tried not to get that crazy. Get it wrong already. Yes. Okay, so question, are you guys already seeing how people answered or am I the only one seeing that? Just I, me. I can't see it, yeah. Courtney, you can see what people have picked already? No, but I need to do it again. <laughs> I don't think it'll let you, that's okay. <laughs> Come on, we got five more people, where's your answer? I don't think I'll have a response because it's oh. not on my screen and um, I'm not even seeing like a, one of those allow pop-ups things. So I got to figure out what's going on. <laughs> okay. Do you have a Mac or a PC? I have a PC. And that is helpful. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see what happens. I've, again, you guys are my guinea pigs. I have never done this before. Um, so the question, Britt, and whoever else couldn't see it, uh, it says basically erythrocytes, and then you're ask, it's asking, are they biconvex disks? Do they have several nuclei in each cell, divide frequently, contain large quantities of hemoglobin or um, E, all of the above? Um, and so let's see what happens when I end this polling. Okay, you still don't see it, right? Mm -mm. Okay, let's Correct. try sh sharing the results and see what you guys get. Oh, and it highlighted the correct answer for us. Oh. Okay, so the first one tricked three people. What, what was the trick there? It's, it's not. concave. Yeah. 
wouldn't Joe, can you show us concave and convex? Like, which is which is which? Yeah. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah. So like the concave side versus the convex side, right? Good. Um, do they have several nuclei in each cell? No. That was a trick question because red blood cells. They don't have nuclei. They don't have nuclei. Good. Therefore, they don't divide, right? They can't reproduce the proteins they need. They can't do cell division because they don't have a nucleus, um, but they do have large quantities of hemoglobin. Yeah? Okay. So then, what? Oh. Next poll. <laughs> oh, this is easy. So Britt, the question is, what is the normal pH of the blood? So you can just think of your answer. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'm also trying to switch over to Firefox right now to see if that oh. works better. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm just troubleshooting on Google. <laughs> this is a good time to do it. Come on. Time's up. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so this one we had pretty well. Um, and notice the two answers that are off are not that far off. But what do we know? Yeah, they're not that far off. Um, this is one of those ones you really, most of the time I'm like, I oh, don't have to memorize all these like random numbers. This is a really good one to know, right? Because you fall below this, you're in acidosis. You go above this and you're in alkalosis. Becky, just to clarify, the pH scale is 0 to 14, correct? Correct. And then 0 is strongly acidic, and then 14 is strongly alkaline? Yep. Basic? Yep. And alkaline okay. and basic are the same, yeah. And then, on Reyna, which end of that do you have lots of hydrogen on? Oh, God. Uh, 14. Zero. Zero. Because hydrogen is one, right? Uh, because of the way the scale is set up, which is really <laughs> frankly annoying. So pH is an inverse scale. So lower numbers actually mean more hydrogen. So like I think of pH as the power of hydrogen. So it's a measurement of the hydrogen, but it's an inverse scale. So lower numbers, higher levels of hydrogen. Mm. And then it's also a base 10 scale. Right, so each change in a number is actually a tenfold difference in hydrogen. So a pH of six has 10 times as much hydrogen as a pH of seven. Got it. And then how about a pH of five? How does that compare to a pH of seven? 100. A hundredfold difference, right? 10 times 10. All right, you get 20 seconds. And Britt, the question is, the major component of blood plasma is what? Sounds good. I just got back in on a different browser, so I don't know if it would have worked or not, but okay. <clears throat> I'll find out. We'll pop the next one up. Four seconds. Get your answers in. Go, go, go. Good. So the major component of blood plasma is water, like 92% or something, right? I think your book went with 91%. Yeah, we're okay with that. Any questions on like what plasma is made of? Because there are proteins in there, there are ions in there. We're okay with those? Okay. Oh, I had a question about, um... I don't know how important it is that we know the tests, but hematocrit and red blood cell count, they mm -hmm. seemed similar to me because it seemed like they were measuring the same thing. 
Yeah, so um, we'll actually do some of that in lab as well. So the hematocrit gives you the percentage of red blood cells. Um, yep. The complete blood cell count, uh, like a CBC, you're really interested in primarily like the numbers of white blood cells. Um, and then there's a hemoglobin test. And so you can have a normal hematocrit, a normal percentage of red blood cells, but you could actually be anemic, right? You could be lacking the, um, the hemoglobin that should be inside of those cells. Right, but the red blood cell count seems similar. To hematocrit? Yeah. Yep, I guess the other, I guess the way I would think about that one is like hematocrit's a percentage, and so that can really change based on um, hydration status. So if you're dehydrated, you could have a higher hematocrit, but if you actually counted red blood cells. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Are we, are we out of class time? Okay, people started leaving, and I was like, wait, did I have the wrong time? We go till 4.40? Okay, cool. I didn't give you a break again. Someone has to remind me next time to give you a break. This is terrible practice. And now I only have 20 minutes left, so I feel like I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> Seriously, someone next time be like, it's three o'clock, let's take a break, Becky. I'm just having fun. Okay, hemoglobin. Oh. Britt, did that show up for you this time? Yes. Cool. Oh, um, that was someone else, I think, who wasn't getting it. No, but I'm playing with options, and right after you said, okay, here we go, I hit a one a button that said black pop-up windows, and I unselected it. So <laughs> I'm about three seconds behind here. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. This is so silly. All right, we got two more people. Get your answers in. Here we go. Calling it. Nice, guys. Okay, so hemoglobin, right? It's actually made up of four different um, protein chains. Each of those has a heme group. Each heme group has an iron. So each hemoglobin has four irons. Yep. And nobody picked oxygen. How many oxygens can hemoglobin carry? Uh, four to six. Four. Oh. four, yeah. Yep, so basically each heme group holds a, each heme group contains an iron and that's where each of the four oxygens binds. Okay. And we get into that, they go way more into it actually when we hit the respiratory system but hemoglobin is one of the coolest molecules, right? Because the way it ends up working it, like as soon as you pick up one oxygen, it actually gets like a stronger affinity for oxygen. And so it picks up more and more and more, right? So it like fills up really quickly, but then it's also willing to let go of those oxygen molecules. Um, otherwise like your tissues would never get the oxygen. So it's really cool that it'll both grab them and let go of them where like, um, what happens in carbon monoxide poisoning? Do they just bind and not let go? Exactly. So there's an even stronger affinity between hemoglobin and CO, carbon monoxide. And so it fills up all the spots on the hemoglobin and then you're not transporting oxygen. That'll kill you. So I have a question about that, Becky. Mm -hmm. So when, when carbon monoxide binds, it kicks off the oxygen is that right from the from the iron i don't know if it technically kicks the oxygen off or it just stays on there and so any oh. more oxygens can't bind okay and is yeah. it the same mechanism where if one binds then there's like a higher affinity for more to come i'm actually not sure on that either okay. yeah um but what you run into it doesn't take that much to drop your O2 saturation level, right? So mm. typically, right, if you put a pulse oximeter on someone, they're gonna read like 97, 98% on a pulse ox. But if those spots are filled with carbon monoxide, even just filling up a small percentage of those, you'll start to see someone's um, O2 um, saturation drop, um, and that can be problematic. And it's actually pretty hard to get the carbon monoxide back off. 
Does anybody know what that treatment is, what you do? So they actually will put you in a hyperbaric chamber. So they actually increase the, the pressure. And I don't know exactly why that works, but it actually pops those carbon monoxides off and then they can reoxygenate a person. So um, if you have carbon monoxide poisoning bad enough, you're getting life flighted because they're not gonna wait, right? And hope that carbon monoxide just comes off. You need to get somewhere with a hyperbaric chamber. Actually, I don't know if we have one here. I doubt it. Maybe down at the spa downtown, I don't know. There's probably a treatment there. Okay, I made another question for you. Ooh. You only get 20, question, 20 seconds and then I'm closing it, so answer. I didn't get that, oh, there it goes. And Britt, the question is the most common formed elements in the blood. Come on, you got like five seconds left. Go, 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 go. Come on, there's two more of you. Go. Right, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> oh, I got it wrong. Okay, so this, why is it, what is the deal with formed elements? What an awkward term. What are we talking about? Isn't that just like all elements within the blood? Well, red and white blood cells and platelets. Yeah, so what, what's the difference, Zoe, between what you're saying and what Molly's saying? Like all of the, go oh. ahead, Zoe all the ingredients or whatever in blood versus yeah, versus, yeah. Um, I don't know, I just know that it's different from plasma. <laughs> okay. Like, I know when you do a blood draw, it like separates things, so. Yeah. Like when you put it in the, cent or in the. Centrifuge. A centrifuge, mm -hmm. like the plasma's on top and all the red blood cells or formed elements are at the bottom. Mm -hmm. In fact, the red blood cells go oh. to the very bottom and then you get like a little layer yeah. of the white blood the cells layer. and platelets, yeah, called the buffy coat. Okay, so what else is in blood other than formed elements? What's in the plasma? Water. Water. Proteins. Ions. Proteins, ions, yeah. So you can't just say everything, but it's, the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets, and why don't we just say the cells? Joe? Uh, because there's also cell fragments, the platelets. Yeah, so the platelets aren't technically a cell, they're fragments of megakaryocytes, and so now we end up with formed elements <laughs> instead of cells. Good. So albumin is not considered a formed element. Correct, what is albumin? It's a, it's a protein. Yep, so it's a plasma protein. Okay. So it's not a cell or a fragment of a cell. But it's, it's formed. <laughs> I know, such an it's awkward so term. Big. Yeah, yeah? yeah. Um, are you guys all okay? You're good with leukocytes and erythrocyte and thrombocyte, you should know those terms. I will say it's much more common to say white blood cell, red blood cell, or platelet, but you should definitely have those because places where it comes in handy. So for example, um, a disorder where maybe you're making excess platelets, throm or I guess this would be deficient platelets, thrombocytopenia, you should automatically be like, oh, thrombocyte, this has something to do with platelets, right? Or um, leukemia, you should be like, ah, oh, well, that's something to do with white blood cells, right? So these are good terms um, to know. What's a lymphocyte? Is it an immune cell? It is an immune cell. So which of those categories of formed elements would you place a lymphocyte in? Leukocyte? Leukocytes. So lymphocytes are a type of leukocyte. Are all leukocytes lymphocytes? No, what else would be a leukocyte? Is it basophils, eosinophils, and neutrophils? Yep, and one more. 
I can't Monosite. remember. Monosite. Monosite. Yeah, good. Yeah, we got that. Oh, so what's the difference between a monocyte and a macrophage? Monocytes in the blood and a macrophage is in the tissue. Yes. It good. transforms. Yeah. And then they just went ahead and changed the name on you. So that was nice. <laughs> okay. So does it actually change like its form or does it just change its name because it's no longer, it's now in a tissue? I would say visually, it doesn't actually change its form. You would still recognize it, but I would say like physiologically, it's probably, um, maybe I would say it's like activated, right? So it's um, more likely to do phagocytosis and things like that once it's out of the blood. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Huh. That's fun. We were just talking about the different leukocytes. So here's your next question. Any luck, Britt? No, but I get my new <laughs> computer tomorrow, so I'm just going to throw this one out the window. It's cool. This one is about the function of leukocytes, but it's very awkward because it says which of these leukocytes is not correctly matched with its function. So I can't really. That's okay. okay. I'm, I'm following along and <laughs> feeling confident about things. So thank you. Okay. We've got a tie and we still have five people left to vote. Any more takers? Whew, by a narrow margin. The basophils one. So this is actually good. This is good conversation here. So um, someone that picked um, basophils, why, how did you know? What, what would be the correct match there? They uh, secrete histamine and heparin. Good. So basophils are really important, like in this inflammatory response, they're um, releasing exactly um, histamine and heparin. Um, who, who synthesizes antibodies? So the other one. Nope. So well. Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. So when it says lymphocytes are vital in immune response, that is true. And they're part of their vitalness. Um, at least the B lymphocytes produce antibodies. So then eosinophils, this was actually a tough one because that's not typically what I think of when I think of eosinophils. What do, what, what do you know eosinophils do? They can kill worms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is when, when I think about eosinophils, someone who has an elevated level um, or an elevated percentage of their white blood cells being eosinophils, that's really common in a parasitic infection like a worm um, or in allergies. So this seemed like a weird statement that they reduce um, inflammation. Did anyone find that in the book? Yeah, um, it says uh, cinephils apparently modulate the inflammatory response by producing enzymes that destroy inflammatory chemicals such as histamine. Nice. So the really funny thing with this one is last night I was actually listening to a radio lab podcast about parasites. <laughs> And they had a guy on there who had really bad asthma. And he heard that getting a parasitic infection could actually improve his asthma. And this is probably the, the link in there. No, literally, um, he went to Africa and he walked around barefoot um, purposefully to pick up worms. Um, and he said his asthma went away. So um, there you go. <laughs> so they do play a role in kind of modulating inflammation. But now he has worms. So, Well, what gets grosser is he will sell you his worms so that you don't have to go to Africa. That is seriously 
it's something that my uncle would do. I'm not even kidding you. Like a hundred percent. Is this my uncle? <laughs> Ask him if he was on NPR. Um, you know, it's a really interesting, it was really interesting if you guys listen to Radio Lab at all. It was one on parasites, but um, you know, this idea that that Western medicine doesn't have it all figured out. But then at the same time, I was like, holy cow, like you could have gotten hepatitis or, I mean, like there's so many other things you could pick up by walking around barefoot in like, I mean, he was literally going to like latrines, like to try to pick up worms. So um, it would be cool if we could actually study this more and come up with a way, right? Like if this actually works, could you get worms without having to like mail order them from, Ali's uncle in <laughs> who knows where. So yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so on that one, if you were stuck kind of trying to choose between those two, hopefully, um, if nothing else, it's that like, man, lymphocytes are the ones making antibodies. Or like Joe said, wait, basophils make histamine. So okay. I think I got one more. We doing okay. Sorry, I was having fun with this one. Whew, this one requires a lot of reading, so I'm going to give you a minute to answer this one. It's about hematopoiesis. All right, any last votes? Look at you guys. Nice work. What's the, um, so we had someone voted for the medical condition with the maternal fetal blood type incompatibility. What, what is that disease called? Hemolytic. Hemolytic disease of the newborn, yep. Okay, and then I think I, mm, I can't remember. Hematopoiesis then is this um, cell production. What is hemostasis? Blood stopping. Blood stopping, blood clotting, right? And then homeostasis? Ability to to stay balanced and alive. Good, yeah, that's that. Yeah, staying near set point, staying balanced, good. Okay, people always confuse them because they look super similar. So do not let me get you on that one. Okay. Okay. Any other questions before we get out of here? Um, at the end of the chapter, there was this really long word, and I just want to hear you pronounce it because I couldn't do it. And Where it are you was, looking? Um, it was, they were talking about anticoagulants, and the acronym is, or the, it's F-D-T-A. What page are you on? Um, I don't have my book in front of me. I, I just remembered. It was, it was at the very last chapter, though, or the, the second to the last one. Let's see. It's the longest word I've ever seen. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, if I'm not recognizing the uh, acronym, that's not a good sign. Let's see what I can do here. Um, I can try to Google it. Sorry. Was it, was it EDTA? 
Oh yeah, I, I wrote it down wrong. E D T A. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Where are you seeing that? Page six sixty five. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. You. Are, you guys are a good team. Oh yes. Oh jeez. What is yeah, I Okay, so it's ethyl ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. Just say it really fast. Diatinimini. <laughs> 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 ethylene. I can't do it. Ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. Oh my gosh. All right. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, it's an anticoagulant. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with heparin. Heparins are really nice <laughs> anticoagulant. <laughs> Smaller. I'm going to go with you're probably just going to hear EDTA on that one too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So I still need to make you guys a recording, um, but we are moving into, what is that? Chapter 20 then, which is on the heart. So next week in lab, be ready to go on blood. And I know you already did the heart stuff. You can show me both um, of those at the beginning. Some people were starting to like send me pictures. Just, just bring it in. We'll be all right. Um, okay. What do we think? Like, is the polling, is that sort of fun? Is it a waste of time? Do I need to pick harder questions? I picked like a nursing. It was like nursing review and I just took their questions, but. I liked it. It works okay? Yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll just keep trying to mix it up, bring different things. Thanks. Molly, question? Um, so I was just looking at the um, modules, and I didn't see a video for chapter 19.4. Am I missing it? Um, I think it's probably combined with something, because 19.4 was like uh, what blood is made of. Yeah, so um, I put 13 and 14 together even though in the smart book they're in different sections sorry so it's all under homostasis uh nope so oh yeah sorry i see why that's confusing so i did one that was blood functions and that's kind of how the chapter started so like 19 one 19 two yeah and, and then, then now i see it what blood is made of is 19 three and 19 four yeah sorry I set up smart book like before the semester started. And then when I was going back through, I was like, that's kind of an awkward way to split it. So I, I think I just saw the 193 and 194 and thought it was like a smart book or a reading thing and didn't oh. notice there was a link for a video. Yep, yep. I was like, I don't remember you lecturing on the set. Okay, we're good. Never mind. Okay. Cool. And then Did are there two labs due next week? Yep, so you did the heart lab already, right? So I think that was exercise 20, 27. 27? Yep. Um, okay. And so then, oh, yeah, yeah. So sorry, blood is going to be, what is it? 25. Exercise 25. And 26, let's see. Should we just do one of the review sheets? Sure. Let's do. Let's do the review sheet for 26 because you guys liked blood typing so much. It'll make oh. you think about it some more. Okay. Yeah, you can just do that one. That's fine. Okay. Thanks. 26. Yep. yep. Okay. And Becky, when is our first test? Uh, that's a good question. Can't be too far down the road. Um, looks like we have the heart. And then it looks like after that, we get our first exam. Okay. Because I didn't see it on the syllabus. Is it on there? Did I not look hard enough? Um, I'm seeing it under modules. I don't know if I put a date on the syllabus for it. I probably do not have a date on the syllabus for it. But it is in the modules? Yes. Let's see if it's published, though. It's not published. That's why you can't see it. It's published now. That's totally fine. I just wanted to, just trying to, I didn't want it to be like next week and we'd be like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty much after next week, so. Um, 
Yep. Uh, so we'll do, it'll be part multiple choice on the computer and partially a take home, um, but all of it's open book, open book, open note, um, open internet. It's just no phoning a friend. So um, I will get more details on that, but I think what we'll do is like, instead of taking a quiz um, at the end of next week, that exam will open up, but you'll have until the next week to do it. So you'll have a good, you know, five or six days to actually finish it. So you can work that into your schedule. And cool. this is the exam on the 29th you guys are talking about? The practical or? No. Just no. The lecture I, maybe exam. it didn't pop up for me. Never mind. Just a lecture exam. Oh, okay. Never just mind. a lecture exam. So we, sorry, yeah. we'll still have the quiz on the heart at the end of next week. I think I'll probably, yeah, I've already got the heart quiz, quiz listed. Yeah. Um, I don't see it. Well, I guess there's two ways to look at that. The heart quiz, I suppose if we leave that there, it gives you an opportunity to go, one, to get points, and two, um, to go through quiz questions, but it's also one more assignment. I don't know, you may have strong feelings. Are you pro quiz or anti quiz? Keep no. the quiz, get rid of the quiz. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you what. As your teacher, let me think about it and see which makes the most sense, and I'll let you know. Yeah, only if we have longer on the exam, just because I already had like in my head that the quiz is due by, the heart quiz is due by Sunday, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden if we had a big exam due next week, within the end of next week, that would be a little hard with timing. Yeah. Um, yep, with, um, and I can, I can give you longer on the exam. The thing, the hard part with that though is, we'll be rolling right into the <clears throat> next stuff. So you're going to be like, I need to be doing these smart book things. So I'll tell you on Tuesday. How's that? Sounds okay. Good. Sounds good. Okay. Oh, I do have a question. I'm sorry. I know. No, you're fine. And then you can, no, you guys mind. can go stay. No, you're fine. Audrey, what's up? I have office hours now. Anyway, what's up? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I just had a question on like, so for the exam, are they going to look like the questions for the quizzes? Because those quizzes take me like two hours. So I just want to know like... Um, quizzes taking two hours? Oh yeah, every time. Wow. No, I can't okay. see products, so I like... Agreed. ...to make sure that it's right, but they mm -hmm. are very difficult. So I just... Um, and that's okay. I've done well on them, but if that's going to be a reflection of how the exam is, then like... I need to memorize the textbook. <laughs> that is the goal. That is the goal. Um, let's do this. So let's do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the heart quiz shorter. So I'll make it like a 10 point quiz, right? Make it something shorter, but still give you the chance to kind of go through those questions um, before you hit the exam. And what I would probably recommend is I can stretch the exam into next week, but it starts to get awkward, right? Because we keep moving. Um, so I would probably suggest taking the heart quiz sooner. Um, and leaving yourself then more time to work um, on the exam, but I'll just make that one shorter, but we'll okay. keep it in there. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, it's just some of the questions are really long, like on the quizzes, yeah. you know, with lots of things to pull in. So, I mean, each, and that's where you get those point two five whatever, because they're, each question is very um, long, typically. Yes. And if you're trying to make sure you're getting all of those parts, you're going back and checking each one. Yeah. So is that going to be kind of reflective of what the exam is? Is that what we should be expecting or? I would say expect that. Okay. And so then be pleasantly surprised if it's otherwise, but yeah. Sounds good. Do, uh, so here's a question though. So those quiz questions, um, do you feel like at the end of it, like are you actually learning from taking the quiz because you've had to look up all those different parts or are you just like, what was that? Little of both. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. It's kind of like the smart book, how like sometimes the questions can be very convoluted in a way of like, okay, I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to make sure that I know like step A, B, C, D, E, F all the way. <laughs> but mm -hmm. like then it'll it'll ask you like almost like it'll ask you about like a middle step, but you need to know like the first and the last in order to answer that like middle part. That's a really bad way of describing what I'm trying to say, but 
that can get really confusing. So at the end of it, I'm like, I think I know this concept better. But the quizzes are helpful. I mean, it's kind of like with the smart book. It's like one of those given to me. I'm sorry, well, I don't want to talk. No, and it's, but it is, that's the hard part. You know, I'm still trying to figure out like this online teaching because it's like, if it's a question that's just like, well, what's the pH of blood? You either like flip the page or you Google it. <laughs> and so, you know, the idea is to have those questions that make you go, okay, do you really get it? Can you apply it sort of thing? Um, and so that's why I'm going with that. So it's, I think that it does accomplish that goal. I think anything that you did, honestly, like probably would have that same effect. Like even if you wrote the question, I think I would still probably be like, <laughs> you know, like it would just, it's just, it's just how those questions go. So yeah. but they take a long time. So if the test is timed and it's going to take me, and it takes me two hours to do 25 questions that I'm yep, like, yep. yep. So there's some incentive to really kind of, be reviewing going back through notes and having yourself really organized for it for sure for sure yep do Mom, you anticipate the exam being timed the yes online portion okay yeah but i would expect something like um i don't know i'll go back through and look to it how long it is taking you guys to to take the quizzes but like what i just did in micro was um they had like an hour to do 25 multiple choice questions Molly? Does the exam is going to be in McGraw-Hill format as opposed to like the Canvas format that we've done in the past? Yeah, you know, I haven't, I think it'll probably be on Canvas. I haven't actually looked through McGraw-Hill's, like their test bank um, for that. Oh, why can't I, what did I just do? Micro. Well, now that's interesting. Micro, I took some of the McGraw-Hill questions, but then it shows up in Canvas. How's that for convoluted? Okay. So I'm not sure. Um, I'll start looking at that and try to give you a better <laughs> answer on Tuesday. I'll see what they have. Because I think that just helps, like if it's just like straight up multiple choice questions, like it usually is in mm -hmm. Canvas, then I think it helps just to understand how you're preparing for it. Okay. Okay, uh, let me um yeah, let me look me. and see what they have available and I can give you an answer on that on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. See you, Tanya. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Publish the heart quiz earlier than Thursday. Yeah, I can. Just um, just so that we can like take it earlier than 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 that Sunday due date. Yeah, do you not, does it not show up for you already? Or maybe I have the date as like a restricted. It, it's, it shows up, but I thought that the quizzes didn't open until, not the smart books, but the quizzes. The Sunday. Let me look. Cause I can, okay. let's, I see it on Canvas. Because this week it's today, the blood quiz will open, correct? And we're talking about next week for the heart. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I can make that. Hmm. Yeah, let me see if I can change that. Right now, like I just clicked on Heart Quiz in Canvas and it took me to McGraw Hill and I went into Student View and it's like, go ahead and start. Um. Yeah, and I haven't tried it yet, so it might be that case too, but I don't know. So many of these different formats. I mean, as a student, that has to be really frustrating. Um, I think you should already be able to see it. Um, tell you what, when you actually go to, um, like when you're ready to take it, if you're like, Hey, I'm going to do it on Tuesday or whatever. Um, let me know if you're not finding it. Cause from my side, it's looking like you should be able to see it. Sounds good. We'll okay. Just be in touch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Bye, see ya. Thank you. Thanks.
can stop recording. <laughs> I think I'm recording on my end. I can. Yeah, okay.